So now we are going to take a look at the civil rights movement. In this first video, it's going to be short. Uh, I'm just going to give you an overview, kind of the who, where, when, why, and uh, some of the big victories. Right? And the next one, we're going to fill out this side of the board, and we're going to look at some of the big events, some of the most well-known events in the movement, so you can... Well, one, know what they were, and two, see a timeline, because there's something about this, I, about the sequence that I want you to see, and, um, and I'll reveal that in this next video. All right, so now, this, uh, this overview that we're going to take a look at. So the when, with the civil rights movement, you know, what are we talking about here? What time period? Well, we're talking about 1954. To 1968. That is often the time period that is given. 1954 was the Brown decision. Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas. Topeka, Kansas. It's the one that uh, where the U.S. Supreme Court declared segregation in schools to be unconstitutional. Right? Big decision. Really important decision. It was in 1954. Uh, one of the lawyers... And just as an aside, don't think you'll get asked. One of the lawyers in the case for the plaintiffs, that's for Brown, was Thurgood Marshall. He became a, a justice on the Supreme Court later on. Right? So that is often given as the, the date when the, when the movement started. 1968 is often given as the date for when the movement ended because that's when Martin Luther King was assassinated. And we don't really read about we don't really hear about things after that i'm not saying things didn't happen but history books don't have a whole lot i get that that's problematic but for the test you're not going to be asked about anything after 1968 you might be asked about 1968 we don't know but you won't be asked after that so we're going to use these 14 years as our boundary for the civil rights movement why it's so our second bullet here. Why? What was the goal of the movement? The, the main goal, at least in the beginning of the movement, was ending racial segregation. Now, it, 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 that goal changed a little bit, well, a lot really, as we moved into the 1960s and then towards the end of the 1960s. It became not just segregation, but equality more roundly. Right, and then especially when King started uh, speaking about Vietnam, but in the beginning, and for a lot of it, the goal was ending racial segregation. So let's write that here: ending racial segregation. Ending racial segregation. So I can write that. That was the big goal. So Brown was a, a big victory, but it only applied to schools. It didn't apply to the rest of society. It didn't apply to transportation. It didn't apply to jobs. It didn't apply to lunch counters. It didn't apply to you know, small businesses. It didn't apply to public water fountains and bathrooms. I mean, there's all kinds of things that it didn't apply to. It just applied to to school, so there was a lot of work still to be done after Brown. So 1954 and 1968, why? Who? Who are we talking about here? The let's think in terms of organizations, right? Because this was a movement, it was organized, these actions were organized, and they were organized by a number of different uh, organizations, but I um, I want to write down three SCLC. S N C C and C O R E S C L C, then SNCC and then CORE. And those were three big organizations. So Martin Luther King is often thought of as the leader of the movement, and then I guess in a way he was, but really he was just the most well-known leader. Not to discount all his efforts and his writings, but he was just the most well-known leader of one organization. And it was this organization, SCLC. That's the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And that was his, uh, that was the organization that he was a part of, right? It's said that, to remember that, uh, that movements, 
make leaders. Leaders don't make movements, right? If it wasn't for the movement, he would still be, a, well, he'd still be a preacher, but uh, he would have just been a preacher at this uh, little Baptist church, right? Perhaps, but uh, the movement and then the leader and all went together. Anyway, that's an aside. So, uh, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee at SNCC, and CORE is the Congress of Racial Equality. You're probably not going to get asked about any of that, but I think it's good to know that the movement was composed of organizations, and these organizations put together actions. And sometimes they were coordinated, right? And sometimes they weren't coordinated. Sometimes they were done individually. And there were other organizations as well and that goes to the to the what to and then and by what here i mean what was the big tension what was the big tension here one of the big tensions maybe the biggest tension was the nature of protest the nature of resistance what was it going to look like what kind of protest and uh, one of the big questions maybe the biggest question but one of the big questions was nonviolent. Or more aggressive. I don't want to say nonviolent or violent because it really wasn't that simple. I know for the exam, if you get asked about this, it's going to be probably nonviolent or violent. It's going to be oversimplified. And uh, some of the leaders of, well, all right, Malcolm X is a well known example of a leader that, that didn't always, or I don't know if he ever did, espouse uh, non-violent views. I'm not saying he espoused violent views, but uh, it was certainly more aggressive. Um, White Panthers and Nation of Islam and um, some other organizations, right, that had different beliefs about the nature of protest. Um, so the Civil Rights Movement is, is known, for the most part, for being a non-violent movement, because that's most of the actions were nonviolent, right? They were modeled on Gandhi's approach in India and expelling the British from, from India. That was earlier in the 20th century. And uh, most of the well-known actions were, were nonviolent. But that was still one of the big questions throughout the whole movement was it going to be nonviolent or, or more aggressive, okay? Uh, and we have where, okay? So where is the, the American... South. I mean Mississippi and Alabama and North Carolina and Tennessee. Tennessee wasn't the South. I mean it was the South, but it wasn't in the Confederacy. Right? I mean that's what I mean. So when we think of the South, I want you to think of the Confederacy. All the way back to the Civil War. Remember that if you remember back from the video about the Civil War, we talked about how discrimination, how it started with the black codes and Jim, Jim Crow laws way back after the Civil War, after Reconstruction, during Reconstruction, but really after Reconstruction. Well, that lasted, that segregation lasted all the way to here. So this is kind of, I mean, you know, you can make a, you can really make a link between these actions and, and the Civil War, right? Because we're talking about equality in the South, and equality in the South hadn't been established for a hundred years, right? after the Civil over a hundred years after the Civil War ended, right? It didn't get not legally anyway equality. Okay, so it was the American South, right? Alabama, Mississippi, and Texas. Texas was part of that. Okay, Texas was a slaveholding state, so it's part of that. Certainly, discrimination in Texas. Okay. Uh, so that's the, the who, what, where, when, and why. A little overview of this. And uh, some of the victories, right? Well, there, there were little victories. I'll say little, but they were local victories, regional victories. But there were two national victories. And one was in 1964. These were big victories. 1964, the Civil Rights Act. Civil Rights Act, 1965, the Voting Rights Act. And the Voting Rights Act, 1964 and 1965, the Civil Rights Act made discrimination illegal. 
made this made made racial discrimination illegal everywhere in the country. And so that was that was a big victory. And the Voting Rights Act, it put in place provisions to protect the rights of African Americans to vote in the South, right? Because there were lots of things that were put in place to get in the way. Poll taxes and you know, our literacy tests, all kinds of things. There were obstacles that were put in the way to keep black people from voting in the South. And the Voting Rights Act was intended to, to do away with all those obstacles. So those were big victories. So in 1965, Remember, the Civil War ended in 1865, so 19, 100 years later, 1964, okay? It took for uh, segregation to become outlawed. So I, I keep emphasizing that because I want you to remember that, right? So this is the, the overview of the, of the Civil Rights Movement. And in the next video, we're going to fill out this side of the chart, and we're going to look at some events. So let's go ahead and go there now.